Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. There is so much to cover. Now that little buzzing noise you hear in the background is the fan running in the room because I have the door closed and it's just too hot. So, all right. Let's get in there, shall we? Let's go. So to start with, I showed you the other day that the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Edward, was at St. John Woods Church grounds because he's patron of the London's Garden Society. And of course, as is usual, some absolutely fabulous photos came out and I wanted to make sure that you guys saw them. He toured this green space that is within Westminster. It looks like a lovely spot. Apparently, the schools use it um, a lot for teaching purposes. All right, moving on, still with Edward. He is president of the Seafarers Charity, and he went to the annual general meeting in London. Very nice. Looking good there, Edward. Looking good. Now, moving on to Sophie, I showed you the other day. They were there for the, um, you know, the outdoor thing, and they, you know, farming and water. Well, anyway... As is usual, some more photos came out. I just had to show them because I really love this outfit that she's wearing. I And I love that color on her. I think that really brings out, you know, her her coloring. I, I don't know. She looks younger to me instead of older. Just my personal opinion. All right, moving on. All right, now we're going to go back to Anne again. Remember, she was in Germany. Well, Nick Russell uh, put up a post and said it was so nice to have her there and that it was a wonderful spectacle of the friendship between Germany and the UK, and they put up some fabulous photos. Now, while she was there, Princess Anne was presented with the quote-unquote silver horse in the category of personality. They gave her an award for her deep attachment and immense contribution to the equestrian sport. Now, while she was there, she also went to the stables for the British dressage and British show jumping teams. Um, and met a lot of people. She got to meet owners, support staff, grooms, athletes, the, um, the horses. She was there for close to an hour, and I think she thoroughly enjoyed it. This is something that is literally right up her alley. Good for her. I love her. Now, when you see these pictures, you can't help but think, sit back and think, now you know where Zara got her absolute love of horses from. It's very obvious that this is a big thing for Anne. All right, moving on. We're going to move on now to Princess Beatrice, who hosted a charity in Huddersfield. Uh, it was a lunch for her patronage, Forget Me Not Children's Hospice, which helps support children with life-shortening illnesses in West Yorkshire. She has worked with this charity since 2012, and I think it's wonderful, especially you know right now with what's going on with her mother. I think it's fabulous. The restaurant, of course, shared pictures on their Instagram account. One of the pictures was of a menu that uh, Beatrice wrote on. Very nice. All right, moving on, we're going over to King Charles and Queen Camilla. I told you guys that they went to the um, star-studded ball, you know, to help with the elephants and conservation, etc. And again, more pictures came out, and you know me. I, I just feel like you guys should get the full picture, so there you are. This ball marked the 20th anniversary of this charity, which was founded, in case I didn't tell you, by Camilla's brother, of course, we know he's passed away, Mr. Mark Shand. I love those wooden elephants behind them. How cool is that? Charles and Camilla presented the Mark Shand Award and the Tara Award, which was named after Mark's elephant. These awards are to recognize contributions for protecting wildlife in Asia. A wonderful cause and a wonderful charity. And of course, people came out talking about Camilla's outfit, which I thought was lovely, and the diamond earrings she was wearing, which I also thought were super nice. All right, let's move on. Here we are a few days later, and Queen Camilla is at a lab that specializes in new ways to study multiple autoimmune diseases. Now, this was taking place at the Royal Free Hospital in Hampstead. The professor there that she's talking to is named Lucy Walker. Apparently, this is a state-of-the-art 
lab that's doing some really incredible work. I love to hear stuff like that. And when that was over, she went to a reception that was held afterwards. While she was there, she spoke with Derek Errol Evans, known as Mr. Motivator. He is a Jamaican-born British fitness instructor. Lovely. And of course, a big thank you to Remulade Sauce for all of the information on what Camilla was wearing. Moving on. Moving on to Prince Andrew, I just want to let you know they're saying that the back door into the royal fold is now shut very firmly. He was not at the recent order of the garter ceremony, which we know. He wasn't in the public portion of it. I believe he was in the private portion of it. We thought, everybody thought that Andrew wearing those robes to Charles's coronation, maybe Charles softened, but nope. All right, moving on. It was time for the Royal Norfolk Show. It's their big celebration and Prince William showed up. My goodness, amazing. So first he shows up, the kids are standing around chanting his name. The video is really something to see. So yeah, he's high-fiving everybody. Then he went over to meet some of the local scouts that had gotten together to meet him. And you know that he was literally hanging on every single word that these kids said. Anyway, he walked around, he met the first responders, he spoke with the people on the fire truck, he spoke with a lot of the police officers that were there, everybody was around. As a search and rescue pilot, you know he was interested in all they had to say. All right, then the next thing he did was he gave the Sustainability Environment Young Employee of the Year Award to Robert Jackets, who was an apprentice at Sal Farms. Then he handed out the Queen's Trophy to a goat called Tion Micah, I think it is, British sane and breed, and her handler, handler T. O'Neill. You know, I think he honestly enjoys this. Now, those weren't the only awards he gave out. The person who had this winning cow also got an award, but all right. All right, time to move on. All right, here we go, you guys. A convicted phone hacker has been helping Prince Harry's legal case and come to find out the court heard yesterday that large sums of money were offered to potential witnesses. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Green said that Graham Johnson, who is, quote, a self-confessed professional liar and who was fired from the news of the world for fabricating stories, has been in a close collaboration with Harry's legal team and another phone hacker named Dan Evans. Both were key witnesses. And uh, they're saying that uh, they offered people money to get on the stand and lie. Oh, my God being alleged they people were offered uh cash and book and film deals if they gave evidence on behalf of celebrities wow well do you guys remember yesterday i told you the the judge said show me the evidence well this twitter user points out that um harry's attorney then said that it was unfair harry had to prove his case because no witnesses were called well, as to this Twitter user pointed out, imagine you're a claimant and you're expected to prove your case in front of a judge in a court of law. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I agree with this Twitter user. That comment makes me also agree and think that Harry only brought that case because he wanted peers on the stand. He's going to try to get even with peers. And, you know, this was supposed to be about a phone hacking thing that happened 20 years ago when he brought... Piers and Megan into it. What does that tell you? Moving on now. It is now official that Harry and Megan have finally left Frogmore Cottage six months after they were given the eviction notice. Now, a senior royal aide said they still don't know who's going to move in. The king would like Andrew to go in, but you know, whatever. Now, what I found very interesting about this whole thing was that they had to pay back the taxpayer because remember they were given like a certain amount of money to renovate the cottage and they chose things over and above the budget. So they were asked to pay those back. I found it very interesting that the family let them take that money and say, okay, you're giving it back and we'll let that count for rent also, which they were supposed to be paying. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, for one, along with everybody else, was wondering, how do they pay their mortgage in California? How did they pay the rent on Frogmore? Well, now we know. Harry probably said, listen, we'll pay it back, but we can't afford 
to keep the rent there also. And so, you know, they made some sort of a deal. I guarantee you that deal was made with the queen before she passed away. So, yeah. Anyway, now when they want to come over, if they want to stay on royal residences, they're going to have to make a deal with Charles, you know, Buckingham Palace or whatever, which I think Charles would appreciate because that way he could keep an eye on them. Yep. Now, Everybody's always saying, oh, the queen gave them this home. It was a gift. No, it's a grace and favor home, which means if you work for the crown, you get to live there for free. You don't have to pay bills. When they quit, that was it. Also, they wanted Frogmore House, not Frogmore Cottage. I think Megan was shocked when they ended up in the cottage. Anyway, listen, they're gone. Bye-bye. All right, next up, these articles are coming out. The royal family says that Megan's going to say who Prince Archie, who made the comment about, you know, Prince Archie's skin color, he's going to reveal the royal racist. Except, do you guys remember when they tried to dial back on that? Remember this? Family of racism, you don't even... Really? Well, of the British press said that. Right. So basically, they tried to dial back on the racism, and when it didn't work, now they're going back into the racism. Uh-huh. Moving on. Thank you to Queen Camilla on Twitter for showing me how Omid Scobie does his research. We have some information on him right now. Remember I told you Omid Scobie is going to be publishing this book called Endgame. It was supposed to come out sooner. It's been pushed back to November. And this is where you have to sit there and go, wait a minute, why is it being pushed back? Now, we know Harry and Meghan helped him with finding freedom, although they both swore in a court of law that that didn't happen and they were both shown to be perjurers. Well, now he's including details of the coronation. I find that interesting because he was not invited to the coronation. He's not got contact with anybody. He, he's out of the royal rota. So where did he come up with this information? I mean, it doesn't take a genius to realize what he did we know that he was recently in L.A. on vacation or he was with Harry and Meghan. We know who's feeding him the information. She met up with him while he was in L.A. You know she did. And uh, during Harry's court case, he was in L.A. visiting with Meghan more than likely. He put up these fabulous photos showing himself just having a great time. And suddenly he's got information to give. What do you think of that? It looks from the photos that he flew in on a private jet. Gee, I wonder how he afforded that one. Hmm. Anybody want to take a guess? Anybody? Anybody? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's coming out in the news that this book is going to have information about Harry's fights with his family. There you go. I mean, it's obvious that he's, they're using Omid Scobie now to air their dirty laundry. Now, it's coming out that Omid apparently works, he says that he works for UTA, not that he's represented by them, but he works for them. I, I mean, Harry and Meghan can't move on. They're just going to continue to complain through other avenues. Well, let me tell you, my two favorite people went on GB News and had something to say about that. So listen to this. I, I had to ask you about this. That odd little mouthpiece for the Sussexes, you know the man I mean, Omid Scobie, very, very odd bloke, very odd bloke. Uh, he's announced he's got a new book on the way. It's called Endgame, and Scobie claims it will be a, quote, penetrating investigation into the future of the royal family. Uh, Nana, I don't think I can decide which will be filled with more lies, this toilet paper from Scobie or Prince Harry's spare. Well, when it was called Endgame, I thought perhaps he was referring to Harry and Meghan, who was actually referring to the royal family and the monarchy. But what does he know about it? I mean, all everything he will be saying will be coming from so-called sources that he seems to have. And how long did Meghan really spend in the royal family? It was like, what, 14 months where she lived with them? So how he can... He, he is just trying to capitalise. Yeah. On the this is, that what this family. book's going to be, Nana, what this book is going to be is loads of bitter bile fed mm. to Scobie uh, by Harry and Meghan's PR team and their friends. And I think how sad that you're using this odd little guy to try and slag off uh, the life's work of your grandmother. I mean, surely, surely Harry and Meghan now need to be focusing on moving forward. Surely 
Mm. We've had enough of this. It feels like they're through somebody else now. They're carrying on with the same thing, but it's just not coming from them. I just find that I just think wish they just get on with focusing on their own lives and start and moving forward in their own way instead of using the royal family. And people like Obed Scobie, Scooby-Doo is what I call it, because if it hadn't been for the pesky kids, he wouldn't have anything to write. All right, moving on. I saw this and I just had to bring it up. This was an article where they said, Archie, they're going to start teaching him traditions like leaving out a thing of wine for Santa. And this Twitter user pointed it out. So um, instead of leaving milk and cookies, she's training him to leave out alcohol. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to this whole psychic Megan thing that's going on now. No, I'm not kidding. It's being reported Megan has told Harry she's been in touch with Diana. We know she put her hands on the grave to commune with Diana. We know that Harry keeps Diana's hair next to his bed. Oh my goodness, you guys. Listen to this. So on the show last night, our esteemed royal biographer Tom Bauer dropped this bombshell about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Watch in touch with Diana and that Diana what? that Diana is assuring Princess Diana. Diana Princess Diana the mother and that Meghan is assuring Harry that his mother is absolutely sure that what they're doing is right and she supports them absolutely in everything they're doing all righty then but let's say that the spirit of the late Princess Diana was in touch with the Sussexes would she really be supporting their campaign against the royal family. Well, to respond, I'm delighted to be joined by her former butler, Paul Burrell. So, Paul, what did you make of this? Dan, have we got to an all-time low? Because I think this couple are dis delusional and have lost the plot. If Meghan is receiving messages from Princess Diana, she must have very bad reception because the princess would never, ever support what... Meghan and Harry are doing in trashing the royal family, especially William. Um, I think this is a crude attempt to use the good profile of, of Princess Diana to support the actions of the Sussexes and indeed to promote their brand, which is failing. I think it's a very, very low move. There were hints at this, weren't there, Paul, uh, mm. in Prince Harry's autobiography, Spare. Uh, do you think Meghan is playing on Harry's vulnerabilities emotionally when it comes to his mother? Of course, of course she is, Dan, of course. I've always said that when this 36-year-old mature professional woman who knew exactly what she wanted whispered into Harry's ear, Harry, if we were a couple, we could change the world. Harry did never heard Meghan's voice. He heard Diana's voice. I believe she is manipulative. I believe um, she is using this situation to the very best of her abilities. Oh, she could not step into the shoes of Princess Diana because Diana only gave. You know, and Harry have done in America, they've taken. When will they get off their backsides and do something for nothing and do something for other people the way Princess Diana did? Why, when will they do a public duty the way William and Catherine are doing their work in this country. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, apparently Megan is telling Harry that uh, she's in touch with Diana. Now I agree with this person. Don't worry, Netflix, a new concept. She can interview, she can reach Diana and Harry can interview Diana. Maybe other leaders from beyond the grave. But why not? All right, you guys, Mystic Megan. Uh, let's move on. The Royal Household's annual financial statement came out. It was put online, is completely, you know, transparent so everybody can see what was spent. Uh, now, we also know that the monarchy raises um, tourism. Oh, my gosh. I think they, they added like $1.5 billion to the economy in the UK. And I agree with uh, Evans Einstein, all these people that talked about the royal family expenses, you're wrong. All right, we're gonna roll into the end here. They're saying it's time for Prince Harry to get over his addiction trauma. I agree. In case you guys haven't noticed, this is an almost 40 year old man who still talks like a 12 year old. If I hear what, you know, 
I hear one more time about how he walked behind his mother's coffin. That was 25, over 25 years ago. Move on. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh my God, Mystic Meg. I can't get that out of my head. All right, leave those comments. You know I want them. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to double check. If you've already hit the button, make sure you're still subscribed. You'll find links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my physical address in case there's something you want to mail. For those of you who've donated to my coffee funder through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.